Hey Pony Pals, it's Emma from Pink Pony Studios and today I have another tutorial for you guys. So you all voted on Instagram about what horse you wanted to see um, in Bay and because today is the Bay video, that vote was for a Catch Me or True North. So we're gonna go ahead and start working on a Bay True North but I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys all the materials that we're gonna use to get started. Okay. So as you're all aware, probably by the first video that, that I've put out, um, I use Comart, which is the Iwata brand airbrush paint. And I have all right in front of me, I have all my paint colors that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to start out with, so I'm going to start out with this, like a kind of mustardy yellow. It is actually iron yellow. Looks a little bit different when you actually get it mixed up. So we're gonna start out with a base of iron yellow. You could probably start out with actually a base of like a reddish brown, but because I like the yellow undertones, I always go with iron yellow, and then I mix in a little bit of gold from Iwata as well. Next, I use burnt sienna and burnt umber. So these are my brown tones that I go with. And then my little secret ingredient is I use red and purple. And this is the same thing I do with chestnut too, which we will get there when we get there. I will make a chestnut video, don't worry. But red and purple, and I'll show you guys exactly how I use these because you definitely want a little bit of these in your bay to make it a nice, rich, rich bay. Then I have black, our classic black that we're gonna use for some shading and points. And then I'm gonna make this a little bit of an experimental video for me because I have some new paint colors mixed up, but I have Knox Gold, which is a brand new Perlex color that I have mixed up, and Interference Blue, which I've seen Briar do some Interference Blue on their bays in the past couple of years. So I'm gonna give it a shot. I have never used it on a bay before. It could turn out good, it could turn out bad, but we'll see. All right, let's go. Okay, so I'm at a point where I have the iron yellow laid in. He looks really, really, really yellow right now, but that's okay. And as you guys can see, I left off the legs um, because when I go back and do the black points, I don't exactly need a whole lot of shading there. It's just going to be black. Um, so next I'm going to add just a touch of gold, but I think I'm going to try the Knox gold. Um, which is that new color I had mixed up. So I'm gonna go ahead and give that a shot.
Okay, so I put on a layer of the Knox Gold. It's really hard to see on camera, but it added this awesome, awesome shine to him, but it's super duper thin. So it really didn't change the color at all, which is what I was thinking it might do. So what I'll probably end up doing with this Knox Gold is that I'll shade a couple more layers of brown, start getting into the reds and purples, and I will layer the Knox Gold throughout. So if you see me come back in with this little teeny uh, vial of paint, then that is what I'm adding is the Knox Gold. Now to get to the Interference Blue, that's gonna go over the way, way top top. So that's gonna be the last thing we put on. Um, but in the meantime, I'm gonna go back and forth. I'm gonna start adding brown layers in. So I have the Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber. And then when I get to the red and purple, I will stop and I will come back and talk to you guys about how I use those colors.
All right, so I'm at a point now where I'm gonna start adding the red and purple. But what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take this guy out and clear spray him. He seems to be having a weird reaction to paint in some places, which you cannot see on camera, unfortunately. Um, but he's getting a little bit of speckly in places, uh, which is okay because I can actually, I was planning on giving him a nice big blaze. So where it's mainly happening is on this part of his forehead, but we have a really nice color going. And see, like, if I was doing a light wild bay or starting to do a chestnut, this is kind of where I would start working in some, you know, back some more yellows and I would go down further into the legs, um, maybe bring in a little bit of, uh, I still do use red and purple on chestnuts, so that would be about this time too. But as we're doing a bay, I am going to go darker, not too dark. I don't want him like, like my horse is a very dark bay brown but I want a nice, like a reddish bay. Um, as you can see, I've left some of the yellow showing through in these areas. And that just provides another layer of shading underneath. So when I come back from clear spraying him, we're gonna start working in the red, purple, and black.
Okay, just like you saw in the tutorial for the black horse, now we have our bay horse here. And I'm going to go ahead, I, I really don't want to give him uh, too many white markings on his legs, maybe like one little sock, probably on this foot. I like that foot. Um, but he is going to have a big blaze, seeing as that we had some uh, trouble with the paint here. You might not be able to see it, but um, the paint had like an adverse reaction to itself, but it's okay. We can go ahead and cover that up with a white marking. So I'm actually going to give him a um, bald face or like a big blaze, but I'm going to go ahead and start drawing that on with my chalk pencil. Here we go. Okay, so now I'm at the point where I can start working on white markings. And I'm actually working on this guy as the same at the same time as the other tutorial horse, the black one. So I've already got my white paint mixed up, but just to make sure, if you haven't seen that tutorial, I will definitely put that as a little card somewhere here in the video. Uh, but I will very quickly explain what materials I am using in order to make these white markings. So we've got our Liquitex heavy body paint, and this is just regular brushable acrylic and I thin it down with golden airbrush medium. So like one dab of this to a couple drops of this and it totally, totally depends. Um, I may add a little bit more in my, uh, in my top layers. I like to have my bottom layer of paint just a little bit thicker so that it covers better. But we're gonna go ahead and start working on this fella. Okay, so I'm finished with the white markings on this guy. He's got his nice big blaze. I saved his two kissy spots there. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint up his main tail and hooves. Okay, so we are done with white markings. See, he just got a little sock with some ermine spots and a big old blaze. His eyes are also blocked in as well as mane and tail are done. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint on the pinking, the eyes, and the shoes, and then we are good to go. 
All right, he's all finished. He got his awesome hoof stripes, his pinking, his eyes, everything to finish up. And he is a gorgeous, gorgeous shaded bay. I might add some pictures of him at the end, or you can check out our Instagram, Paint Pony Studios, and our Facebook, also Paint Pony Studios. And this guy, um, probably before the video's release, will actually be up for sale as a sales piece on our website. So if you snag him, if you're the one to snag him, he is awesome. One of my favorite bays I have done in a long time. But in the meantime, Pony Pals, don't forget to like and subscribe if you liked the video. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.